can know UI. Hello and howdy. Welcome to another Kendo UI for Angular tutorial. My name is Alyssa Nichol, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about notifications. Pop-up notifications, often referred to as toast or snack bar notifications, first showed up in the UI scene around 1991, when Macintosh OS added a UI element called Balloon Help that acted as a pop-up with additional information, but it didn't take up the full screen real estate as a traditional pop-up modal would. In Windows 2000, Microsoft introduced Balloon Help-like passive pop-up notifications tied to the notification area of the taskbar. These are the foundations for the pop-up notifications that we have today. Our Kendo UI notification is an even further improvement on this wonderful element. We have positioning, templating, theming, and animating. So let's dive into this simple yet powerful component. Let's start off by looking at the most simple example of a Kendo UI notification. So here we have a paragraph and a button that you can see rendered down in this window below. And we need to go ahead and create a method to call on button click. So we will call it show simple, I suppose, to show the most simple version. Uh, returning void and inside of that, we're actually going to access our notification service that is from Kendo UI. You can see I have gone ahead and injected in the constructor here. So we can say this dot notification service dot show and that we can pass. This is where the magic of the notification will happen. And so this is where something like uh, content, for instance, can be passed. And so we'll say uh, this is a this is notification content. Uh, and so now if we save and go back here, we should be able to potentially, oh, <laughs> silly me. Okay, I created the show simple, but we have not wired it up to our button yet. So on click, let's go ahead and plug in our show simple function here. Save that, and now we should see very simple, not styled at all. There's no, um, there's no way to to close it. We don't have any icons, anything like that. It's just the most basic um, of notifications. But if you'll notice, it does disappear after uh, after so long, and those. Um, those pieces, such as how it hides, uh, how long it takes to animate out, um, all of those are accessible through the API. So let's uh, dive in a bit further. Uh, so something else that you can pass is the type. And so we can uh, bah, 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 say what style we want. So I want this to be an info type. And I want that info icon to show up. I want it to be set to true. Uh, so now if we save and click, you can see that it is blue and that we do have an info icon. Um, and if we pull up our docs real quick, we'll see that burr, 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 burr. Uh, we'll see that types are all listed out nicely. And I have this zoomed in in case you're wondering why the type uh, font is so massive on types. Um, I have it zoomed in for your leisure reading. But types include none, which is how we started initially, success, info, error, and warning. And we have a demo, of course, that shows all of these different types of notifications, um, as well as with the different themes that we offer. So our default theme is going to have a different um, color, a different color scheme for each of these, as well as potential different icons as well, same as material. Um, so definitely check out the docs to learn more about types and what all you can pass it. Um, next up on my list, on my, my tour of notifications, uh, I want to talk about animation. So this is for the fade in animation and the initial default, uh, is fade. That's what we've been seeing. Uh, you can also control the duration. Um, 
and that is going to be set in milliseconds. So this would say 500 milliseconds. So if we click show, you'll see the same fade um, and the same duration. Let's change that to a quicker dur duration so it should pop in very quickly with almost almost no animation or fade. Uh, but there's actually another type that you can pass and that is slide. So if we check that out. And again, that's pretty quick. So let's slow it down. There we go. Now you can see that lovely slide. So those are two options that you have with the opening uh, introductory animation, if you will. Next, I wanted to talk about positioning. So you can pass position and then control the horizontal and vertical uh, default position of the notification. So with horizontal, we have three options, uh, left, right, and center. So let's change it to center and go ahead and check it out. So now she's in the middle horizontally. Uh, but then we also have the option to say a vertical. And let's go ahead and say top. Uh, so with vertical, you have the option to say top or we can also say bottom, which is my absolute favorite combined with the slide animation. I don't know why, just like seeing it pop up from the bottom there is like this cute little bunny. I don't know, it's adorable, I love it. Um, so yes, that is in regards to positioning based on the viewport itself. But if you check out our docs on positioning, uh, not only do you have the option to align it based on the browser viewport, but you can position it to a specific container as well. Um, and so there's lots of options when it comes to positioning. Definitely check out our docs, absolutely love them. And the last one for our simple notification that I wanted to show you was closable. It is super easy to toggle. Uh, it, just, it just takes true or false. And so uh, let's go ahead and set it to true because it is false by default. And that will add an X button that will allow the user to dismiss your notification immediately. And so it's a super, super simple, super easy to use. And um, I don't know, I just, I love our notification component. Here I've created another stack blitz um, so that we can walk through, as I promised, <laughs> um, fading not only in, but also fading out and being able to control how uh, notification is hidden in super specific ways. So here uh, I've got three different um, buttons that are going to bring up uh, notifications. And this first one is just the simple one that we've already talked about and dove into. Um, but next I want to address hiding with fade. So to speed things up, I'm going to do a bit of copy paste so that we can move right along. But here I'm grabbing a success template. So if we go over to my HTML, which I broke out for cleanliness, we were getting a bit lengthy. You'll see that I have ng template here for success and I also have ng template here for error. Um, so if we go back to our TypeScript file, I'm using ViewChild to get access to success template and I am creating notification template success is what I decided to call it. And I want to hide it after 2000 milliseconds, which is lengthy. <laughs> uh, so I think let's go ahead and change that to, I think 800 is reasonable. And I think we can pass uh, hide after, uh, do we have to say uh, the start hide after? Uh, to our duration. And so this uh, notification service show should look very familiar based on the last example I showed, uh, except for instead of a content type of string, we are passing a content type of template uh, that we're using to access with view child. So here we're passing notification template success. And then we're just giving some simple positioning and initial opening animation um, properties here. And then we're also setting it to a type of success with an icon and uh, the hide after, which I just realized I plugged that into the before as well, but that's okay. Um, so if we go ahead and save, and now we should be able to click on our second one. And so it pops in 
and pops out rather quickly. Um, and I think I've set the container <laughs> too small so you don't see them all, but you see it fading in and fading out now. And let's go ahead and say, change that back to the 2000 milliseconds because 800 milliseconds is just too quick. The user doesn't even get a chance to see it. And that is way too long of an initial one. So actually let's instead of hide after, um, let's say, what, let's call it duration in and duration out. And let's do, go back to the 800. So we'll say this dot duration in and then this dot duration out. Okay, so this should be a bit, a bit better. So it pops in, you can read it, pops out, beautiful. Um, but there's also an option, of course, of the close button, which we referenced with closable earlier. So I want to address hiding with the close button um, with a more verbose example. So here I'm grabbing the error template. Um, and again, we are passing it a content type of template instead of a string. And if you're, if you're like really confused at this point, you're like, what is, what is all this content stuff? If you head over to our docs um, and you check out the content tab, this will go into further detail of the string that we started off with initially uh, using templates, which I'm talking about right now, and then also rendering a component, which I believe I have an example to show um, at the very end of this video. So hold tight but yes that is the uh detailed information on content um, and then we also have a animation position and type properties being set um so nothing much has changed except closable is true and we're also saying uh, notification after hide subscribe console log hidden so if we go to our console showing that we have access to know when it was hidden, uh, when that event fired. And so I can do that again. And I know my console is like insanely tiny. So let me bump up the size. Pardon, pardon. If it gets, if it gets scary, <laughs> things can always go a bit wonky when you command plus this far, but we're doing it. We're going into the unknown. All right. So we have our notification come in and we hit that. And then you'll see that hidden, that uh, event is firing. And after it's hidden, we see our console log. Uh, beautiful. Um, so yes, this uh, is just a bit further of an example into how you can not only um, fade and control the duration in, but also out as well. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes a simple string won't cut it for your notification. And you might need a longer formatted text, maybe even additional action items outside of a close button. So take this storm warning notification, for example. It has more information than a simple string. It has links to find out more detailed weather information, a button about shelter information, and you can close it if you'd like to get rid of it. Otherwise, it's sticking around. Um, and so this is obviously more than a string. And I wanted to show you how to do something like this. Um, as I mentioned before, this is using the uh, template content type. So we're passing notification template um, that was built out earlier. Um, and then all of these are just customized kendo pieces um, that change based on the size of the UI as well. Um, but the last one I wanted to show you was passing a component. And so here we have this custom component that we've built out. Um, and it even has its own uh, ignore notification um, that is making that happen. Um, and down here where our notification is asking for content, we are passing custom component in. So really, really cool stuff, very customizable. And um, as, as always, our docs are pretty great about diving into all the details. So check those out. Thank you so much for watching this Kendo UI for Angular tutorial. Comment, like, and subscribe, and let me know what other types of content you'd like to see. Till next time.